Unit 3, Biotech Seeds. Biotechnology defined. Well, when asked what is biotechnology, most of us probably think of genetic manipulation as in genetically modified organisms or GMOs. However, according to the UN Convention on Biodiversity, biotechnology is, quote, any technological application that uses biological systems, living organisms, or derivatives thereof to make or modify products or processes for specific use. And Merriam-Webster defines biotechnology as, quote, the manipulation, as through genetic engineering, of living organisms or their components to produce useful, usually commercial products, as pest-resistant crops, new bacterial strains, or novel pharmaceuticals. Also, any of various applications of biological science used in such manipulation. And finally, Bing defines biotechnology as practical use of biological processes. The use of biological processes in industrial production Early examples of biotechnology include the making of cheese, wine, and beer, while later developments include vaccine and insulin production. So, by these definitions, humans have actually been engaged in biotechnology for thousands of years. We have been using yeasts to make beer and wine, molds to make cheese, and simple selection and more active techniques such as inten intentional crossbreeding and hybridization to create plants and animals with higher yields, greater hardiness, more and larger flowers, and more. Corn, or maize, is an example of biotechnology. Ancient Native Americans hybridized an existing native plant, teosente, to create a staple of their, and now our, diet which we refer to as corn. Modern biotechnology, um, as defined by the US, uh, USDA, is a range of tools including traditional breeding techniques that alter living organisms or parts of organisms to make or modify products, improve plants or animals, or develop microorganisms for specific agricultural uses. Modern biotechnology today includes the tools of genetic engineering. So biotechnology encompasses a lot of techniques and essentially anything using biological systems to make something useful is biotechnology. Um, however, in this unit, we're going to be looking primarily at the current state of biotech as it relates to agriculture specifically food crops, and the impact of modern biotech on agriculture. And much of what we're looking at is going to be uh, related to genetic engineering or genetic modification. So why do we do this at all? Well, the, there are potential benefits of biotechnology. Biotechnology can help develop crops that are more disease resistant, more resistant to insects, resistant to pesticides, primarily herbicides, are hardier, able to survive with less water, fewer added nutrients, or in colder or warmer conditions than they normally would. Um, products that can produce larger yields, either by producing larger fruits or seed heads, or being able to be grown more closely together. Uh, crops that last longer in storage, crops that are higher in nutrition, or even contain vitamins that aren't normally available in that plant. And we'll take a look at each of these benefits. Increased disease resistance. It's possible through the use of biotechnology to produce plants and animals that are more resistant to diseases. In fact, plant and animal breeders have been doing this for decades and longer by hybridizing and cross-breeding. Increased resistance to insect damage. Again, plant breeders have been selecting plants for increased resistance to insect damage for a very long time. 
but it's now possible to genetically modify a plant so that it actually produces its own insect toxins, greatly reducing the need for insecticide applications. Bt corn is an example of a plant genetically modified to produce a substance toxic to certain insects. Uh, the Bt in Bt corn stands for Bacillus thuringiensis, a bacteria that produces a toxin which is poisonous to um, insects that have a caterpillar stage in their life cycle. Herbicide resistance. Plants can be bred or genetically modified to be resistant to herbicides. This means a farmer may be able to use a single broad spectrum, possibly non-selective herbicide to kill weeds in the fields without affecting the crop. Regardless maybe of the uh, type of weed that there is, and in some cases, the crop that he's growing. Um, having to only purchase and stock and apply a single herbicide can reduce costs and labor. Using a single herbicide can reduce the chances of error in application because it's always applied in the same way. Roundup ready crops are an example of this type of genetic modification, making plants resistant to the herbicide Roundup or glyphosate. Increased hardiness. Hardiness means increased tolerance to cold or heat or drought or lack of nutrients, as well as increased resistance to disease or insects. Research is being done to create strains of turf grass that require much less water and fertilizer than most current varieties, and similar research is ongoing for many food crop plants. Plants have also been developed to tolerate colder conditions than the areas in which they normally grow. This can allow certain crops to be grown outside their normal USDA hardiness zone. An example of that is uh, peaches, which normally grow in zone six uh, and warmer. Uh, some varieties have been developed that will allow those uh, peach trees to survive um, as far north as zone four. Larger yields. Over thousands of years, humans have selected crops for greater yields. That's one of the things that has driven agriculture. In some cases, this means more or larger fruits or seed heads. And in some cases, it means plants that grow more compactly, so more can be grown in the same space. Uh, and corn or maize is a good example of a plant selected to be grown more densely and at the same time have larger seed heads or ears. Of course, increased resistance to insects, diseases, and herbicides can result in larger yields as well. Longer storage life. Now, one issue with fresh fruits and vegetables is that many have a very limited storage life. Biotechnology has been increasing the shelf life of fresh produce. The first genetically engineered food approved by the FDA for human consumption was the so-called flavor saver tomato, which had a gene spliced in that slowed the process of ripening and softening, giving it a longer shelf life. Um, the flavor saver, however, was a flop commercially because it had a really bland taste. And uh, that wasn't the end uh, result of the genetic modification, though. The variety of tomato used to develop it wasn't very flavorful to start with. Um, they also proved a little too delicate for uh, the rigors of shipping. Greater nutritional value. Plants have been bred to have higher nutritional value and genetic modifications being used to give some plants nutrition they never had before. Golden rice is an example of using genetic modification to provide something that's been lacking. Billions of people on earth depend on rice as a staple of their diets. One thing rice lacks is beta carotene, which is a precursor to vitamin A. In the same areas of the world that rice is a, is a staple, vitamin A deficiency is a problem. Golden rice has had genes spliced in that causes it to produce beta carotene, 
which the human body can convert to vitamin A as needed, and which gives the rice a golden color. This slide shows us golden rice compared with standard white rice. Um, one of the issues, however, in anything like this is that uh, regardless of any other issue or risk of biotechnology is acceptance. Most of the people in the areas of the world where rice is a staple prefer white rice, um, regardless of the taste or the nutritional value. So part of the process here uh, has to be um, education for uh, understanding that this rice is a better way to go. That ends section one.